So one of the things we've seen a lot of this is um, Republicans defend child marriage. They're defending child marriage. Republicans, these fucking gross fucks. Jesus Christ, man. That's why I hate religion. I hate religion. Overall, like everything. It's just fucking gross. It tricks people to doing the weirdest shit. In the past couple months is the right going all in with this narrative that uh, LGBTQ people, and specifically LGBTQ teachers, are groomers. And they're trying to sexualize our young kids and indoctrinate them into gender ideology. Which Remember, is we just watched a video about Ron DeSantis hanging out with younger people, giving them alcohol and shit, being weird. To confuse them about whether, if you're a boy, are you really a boy? If you're a girl, are you really a girl? And, you know, the argument is this is on purpose, it's top-down, and it's confusing them. It's forcing them to be to have a left wing ideology. This is something we've heard a lot of. And you have Twitter uh, accounts like Libs of TikTok, Ow. for example. Ow. They'll look all over TikTok and try to find examples of some weird pink haired teacher in some school district that you know said some questionable thing. No, no, no. Questionable thing, and then they use that to extrapolate to all teachers, or certainly all LGBTQ teachers. And there's this real like moral panic and hysteria going on right now. Now, remember when Matt Walsh was on uh, Joe Rogan's show, he said like, That's in the Bible. of kids are on, uh, you know, uh, hormone therapy because they're, you know, trans or whatever. And then they looked it up and the number was like 4,000 or 5,000 kids. Just nowhere, just way overestimating, you know, what they think is a... That's in the Bible. Um, <laughs> the whole groomer line, groomer discourse has been sketchy to say the least. Well, guess what? We just got... Uh, some new information coming out of Wyoming. Yo, trans people be like, General Kenobi! <laughs> that whole groomer narrative <laughs> right on its head. Efforts to raise the age of marriage to 16 in Wyoming have stalled... Let me repeat that. Efforts to raise the age of marriage to 16 in Wyoming have stalled as the... Wyoming GOP Gross is fucks, urging dude. its constituents to oppose a bill to add a minimum age. Not because the bill is too weak, but because the bill stood to rob their constituents of constitutional rights to marry a child. Wow. So all this talk of the LGBTQ groomers, bro. We gotta protect our kids, bro. Protect them to what? To marry them off at the age of 14? Apparently, yes. That's what they want to do. All right, so we have this video here. Let's play it. The first bill for our consideration is House Bill 7. Reading clerk will read. Please read it in. House Bill 7 in gross. Underage marriage amendments. Raging is they wanted to raise the legal marriage age to 16. I'd ask the body to resist this change and vote no on the bill. Uh, there are communities such as our Amish, Hutterites, and Mennonites here in Wyoming that um, would be invited. Who fucking cares? PA don't be doing that shit. Or do they? It should be illegal. You can't do that, man. If you need to be 18 to drink, oh no, 21 now to drink. If you need to be 18 to go into the fucking military, right? 18 to vote. 18 to do all this shit. You have to be 18 to get married. Point. Blank. Done. Nothing else. That's bullshit. These are some fucking weird perverts. Violation of this law if it was to pass. Fucking weirdos, so because dude. Because they have the Amish and the Mennonites, these sort of fringe religious groups that live a certain way, they're like, well, we don't want to offend them. We don't want to offend their culture. You know, they're in violation of it. That, these it, people it, it are perverts. Right. Per perverts. Well, but it is right. What a pervert. It is right. They shouldn't be doing child marriage stuff. Why all of a sudden, when it comes to like religions, Republicans are like, oh, well, they say religious liberty, bro. So it is what it is. Okay. Stretch that argument to its logical conclusion. If a religion was still doing ritual human sacrifice, you'd yeah, be like, hey, exactly. murder in this instance is not really murder. So, yeah, it's all right, so guys. We're going to go ahead and let it slide. What if somebody says it's part of my religion to 
sex I was going to say sexually assault kids, but that is kind of what they're in favor of here, right? If you're being forced to marry at 15 or whatever, yeah, you're signing them up for abuse. Wow, this is low. They say the bill would also require anyone under the under the age of 18 it's fucking disgusting, seeking dude. to get married. Let's see what else. To receive written consent from their parents under the eye of a witness. 15 to 12. House Bill 7 has passed. The bill has already passed the Republican-controlled House, so the House had passed. That's the Committee of the Whole. The proposal to impose an age of marriage of 16 was favorable with some Republicans in the state. Good. Glad some are on the right side leading to the first real momentum the bill has seen in some time. Wyoming is one of eight states in the country without a minimum age requirement for marriage. Wow. Wow. There are eight states that allow child marriage. Jesus Christ. Ranks among the top ten states in the country for child marriage. Okay. So they go on to say here, the party emailed materials to constituents from Wyoming Family Watch, a religious lobbying group organized by a conservative pastor in the state, arguing that preventing child marriage under 16, from preventing children under the age of 16 from marrying, denies the fundamental purpose of marriage. Currently, the state allows marriage licenses to become a get-out-of-jail-free card for... Freedom! 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 Kids in, in a legal <laughs> quandary, they can't escape as it enters a minor into a marriage before they're old enough to bring That's what that's right wingers think. This Freedom! Stuff dark, this stuff is dark. So uh, in Newsweek, they wrote about this. Wyoming limiting child marriage sparks Republican outrage. Now, Freedom! Again, there are some people who are on the right side, but there are many who are not. The Wyoming Republican Party is seeking to kill a bill working its way through the state legislature, proposing to raise the state's legal marriage age to 16, arguing that putting arbitrary limits on child marriage interferes with parental rights and religious liberty. Freedom! So if it's an LGBTQ teacher... Who you can French kiss the guy next to you. Marriage ...or teach that trans people exist. Stop it, you're sexualizing our kids. This is not okay. Protect the kids. But if it's... Uh, a 14 year old religious person in Wyoming trying to marry off their kid to an adult, it's bro, don't put arbitrary Freedom! In style. Let them live the way they want to live, bro. <laughs> what happened to protecting the kids? Freedom! Well, at the same time, this is a very important fact to bring up. They're screaming about protecting kids. You have a number of Republican states around the country trying to bring back child labor. That is so fucked up. They want to bring back child labor, dude. That last time we had child labor was around World War One. Why are Republicans obsessed with wor with with literally World War One era shit? Like, like uh, FDR didn't he ban child labor? FDR, because kids would literally have to go in the big machines and clean them and shit, and like they'll get their arms chopped off and their fucking heads crushed. Fuck Republicans, bro. Listen, the people are fine. If you're a Republican citizen, it's okay. Unless you're a racist fuck. But the politicians are dicks. So they want to protect kids from LGBTQ That's indoctrination. That's so mean. A.K.A. learning about gay marriage or learning that trans people exist. Protect them from that so you can be sent to the mine <laughs> or married to some religious creepy weirdo. That's good. The bill, which already passed the Republican-controlled Wyoming House representatives on a 36 to 25 vote last month, 25 voted against it, proposes banning state residents from marrying anyone under the age of 16 while requiring anyone under the age of 18 seeking to get married to receive written consent from their parents under the eye of a competent witness. The debate has been a long-standing one in Wyoming. Good. That's good. It's good. You know, instead of uh, the conversations we should be having are like, let's give everybody health care, let's stop bombing so many countries... Uh, let's do sectoral bargaining so workers could get higher wages. Let's lower prescription drug prices. No, in, Wyam in Wyoming, they're like, me want marry 13-year-old. And that's a debate. It's a hot debate going on right now. Currently, Wyoming is one of just eight states in the country, including California, Michigan, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Washington, and West Virginia, without a minimum age requirement for marriage. <laughs> and it currently ranks among the top 10 states in the country for child marriages, according to a 2021 study by advocacy group Unchained at Last. Freedom! Efforts to raise the <laughs> age of marriage in the state have consistently stalled. 
for years, now retired Laramie Democratic Representative Charles Pelkey. So in this state, the Democrats and like some other people are like, they're like, guys, we need to raise the age of consent or the age of marriage. We need to raise it. And they've been trying to raise it. They've been putting bills forward. Oh, let's raise it to 16. Let's raise it to 18. Let's raise it. And these sick efforts keep fucking rejecting it. Because they say, Freedom! Fre 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 freedom! Sponsored legislation to freedom raise to be the a age pervert, of marriage bro. to 18 a, a only to PDF fail with every effort. Fire. Wow. So look, this guy should be a right-wing hero. Because they care so much about protecting kids in the national discourse, all these conservatives, and here you have a Democratic representative who kept fighting to raise it to 18. It's also a common practice across the country even now. While the number of child marriages nationally has been in a steady freefall over the last few decades, well, that's good. Just seven states to date have voted to ban it entirely, even as countries like the Philippines pass national laws banning the practice. So that's good. That's good. Other states like Tennessee have actually sought to go in the opposite direction, with Republicans there seeking last year to eliminate any limits on marriage entirely until public outrage forced them to reverse course. Oh. Wow. This reminds me, remember, Matt Walsh, who uh, sees a trans groomer behind every door, he uh, said on his radio show years ago that he thinks it's perfectly normal for like a 16-year-old or 17-year-old girl. It's like, hey, that's when they're most fertile. They should get married at that age. So the guy who wants to protect kids is actually uh, yeah, super sketchy on the issue of protecting they're kids. Fucking, they're literally... This year, however... They're just projecting. They care so much about kids. Meanwhile, they're actually the ones that want to fucking destroy kids, dude. I fucking hate these people. They're so evil. They're literally Sith. I'm a Jedi right now. They are Sith. Proposal in Wyoming to impose an age floor of 16 has found disgusting and probably illegal in the state, leading to the first real momentum the bill has seen in some time. Er earlier this week, the Wyoming Senate voted up the bill on first reading leaving it just two more votes before it would ultimately head to Governor Mark Gordon's desk. I may just never come back. nothing bill. According to Unchained at Last, an anti-child marriage advocacy group, approximately 97% of child marriages in Wyoming are to girls, eight, girls aged 16 and 17, meaning it would likely impact only a small number of children. What a pervert. It's really great the legislators want to protect 3% of those who are impacted by... You're hurting marriage. the kids! So in other words, the guy kept proposing 18, 18, 18, and they go, that's too high. They drop it to 16. And they're like, okay, maybe. And the reason they're 97% of them are 16 or 17. And so they're like, yeah, maybe if 14, 13, that's questionable. But 16 is fine. You're hurting the kids. Look, I, I actually think, here's my hot spicy take at the end of this, uh, this story. I actually do think it's a fair debate what the line is for everything, right? Um, I, I've advocated for a long time. I do think you're 16, hurting the kids 16 and up should be the case for, you know, tobacco, alcohol. Now alcohol is 21. It used to be, I think 18. Now it's 21. Um, voting, uh, going, go into the military. I understand there. I think there's reasonable debate between people anywhere from age 16 to age, like 20, 21 or 22, right? That that range is somewhere in there you should draw the line and draw a clean line and everything above that you allow. So I actually think 16 and up is is fair, but it is kind of concerning that we're talking about no limits in eight states. None. No limits at all. You're hurting the kids. I never would have guessed that was already the law in eight states. I would have said whatever the age of consent You're morally is, obligated to consent is is when you're allowed to get married, right? So a lot of states it's 18, a lot of states it's 17, a lot of states it's 16. Wouldn't that be the default assumption? Like, hey, whenever you can legally consent to sexual activities is when you can legally consent to marry. But apparently, no. The age of consent for sexual activity and the, age, the consent for marriage is totally different. You have some states with no... You have a mental health problem. Well, that's crazy. So it wouldn't even be legal if it was like a... It wouldn't be illegal if it was like a 12-year-old or like an 8-year-old. or That wouldn't be illegal in some states. That's wild. That's wild. So yeah, anyway, that's creepy. Um, kind of crazy. We're still having this debate in this.
in 2023, but here we are. If you, you have a mental health problem, you, you, you have a mental health problem, you are morally obligated, you have a mental health problem. You're kind of like a snotty face, bitch. <laughs> All right, folks, let's move on there to the next topic. Turkey, Syrian uh, earthquake. There was an absolutely horrific earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria the other day. And it is a, a dire scenario. So we're going to get to the specifics in a second. I'll show you a video. But as of this recording, Let's talk at about least 36,000 really people fucked up. are dead. A and I think that's just in hurt. Turkey. And that number is continuing to rise more and more and more. They're still looking through the rubble. Now, um, one of the things that was so devastating about this is not only that it was a really, really strong earthquake, but a lot of these buildings in Turkey, maybe about half of the buildings in Turkey, are not really up to code to deal with a strong earthquake. Yep. Um, and in the case of Syria, they're, I mean, they're in an equally bad scenario, except they're also not getting any aid that comes in to help them because of sanctions against them. So just a really horrendous situation all the way around. So again, we'll get to the video in a second. I'll show you the horrible carnage on the ground just everybody warning in advance when we get to the video it's going to be it's tough but um this is an npr here video show turkey's erdogan boasted letting builders avoid earthquake codes well that's good that's good this is like the story we just discussed about the train derailment in ohio the toxic chemical fire the wildlife dying everywhere an entire ohio town being poisoned and all of it stems back to the industry said, don't make us upgrade our brakes. That costs money. We're going to keep using these Civil War era brakes. Yep, remember so we talked words, about this. Avoiding new regulations because it costs money. And as a result of it, poisoning everybody in sight. And having an absolute ecological and environmental catastrophe and disaster and rampant health problems. I mean, it's, it's like, it's a joke, right? Because the answer is so straightforward. It was just, hey, suck it up, pay the money, do the goddamn upgrades. Just do the upgrades. It's $55 billion industry. And they were like, no. No, we don't want to do that. Again, here you have Erdogan bragging. Yeah, we, you pay a little extra money, basically a bribe, and uh, you're good. We, you, know, you don't have to do the building codes. Well, Turkey's on top of multiple fault lines. This isn't just like a casual choice and a flippant decision with no consequences. The consequences are now you have 36,000, more than that, dead bodies. Jesus Christ. As Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan struggles to defend his response to last Monday's devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake, videos from a few years back have emerged showing him hailing some of the housing projects that crumbled, killing thousands of people. Critics say contractors were allowed to skip crucial safety regulations increasing their profits, but putting residents at risk. The videos have fueled public outrage over slow efforts to help residents in the aftermath of the massive quake, the world's deadliest in over a decade, that killed more than 35,000 people in Turkey and neighboring Syria and left many injured and without, home, without a home, food, or heating in the middle of the winter. In one video taken during a campaign stop ahead of Turkey's March 2019 local elections, Erdogan listed some of his government's top achievements, including new housing for the city of Karaman Maris, also known as Maris, near the epicenter of last week's quake. Quote, we solved the problem of 1, uh, 144,156 citizens of Maris with zoning amnesty, Erdogan said, using his term for the construction amnesties handed out to allow contractors to ignore the safety codes that have been put on the books specifically to make apartment blocks, houses, and office buildings more resistant to earthquakes. Engineers and architects say the lack of safety features designed to absorb the shock of earthquakes likely contributed to the soaring death toll. Yet again, lack of good regulations that are enforced, it's deadly. It's super duper. I'm trying to like uh, put a charger in, but it's... Oh my god, what a cheap ass piece of shit.
super deadly. This is why you have regulations. This is why you have regulations. Another analogy. We got rid of the regulations on Wall Street in the financial sector, got rid of Glass-Steagall, and oh, would you look at that? We had the 2007 and 2008 subprime mortgage crisis and Great Recession. Yep. These things have consequences, man. So let's get to the video, and you'll see just how bad it is on the ground there. In this morning, but hope in finding more survivors is fading. This morning, the desperate search for survivors oh as a critical window Dude. to find people alive man. narrows, and the death toll tops 28,000. The UN warning that number could double. I think it's really difficult to, to, to estimate. And that's, that's terrifying. This dramatic drone footage capturing the scale of the destruction in Turkey. U.S. military aircraft and supplies now arriving to aid in the response, as members of USAID use dogs to scour more than 630 sites across the city, determined to find life buried deep within the debris. It's still possible, but it, but it seems like those these rescues are happening fewer and fewer. Yeah, it's, it's many days beyond now, so... Naturally, Aww. the temperature, the climate's uh, pretty rough here, um, and the type of collapse and structures that are down on them are, are make Aww. it very difficult for them. But as hope fades, still miraculous stories of survival as rescuers work tirelessly cutting through collapsed buildings. In Hatay, Turkey, a two-month-old baby pulled from the rubble of a decimated building, onlookers applauding. <laughs> Nearby, a seven-year-old boy pulled from the earth after 136 hours, first responders working desperately to save his life. This video from the 138th hour, filmed by the Istanbul rescue teams, showing the harrowing rescue of a mother and son. <laughs> and incredibly, 147 hours after the quake, this 10-year-old girl now free. These glimmers of hope amidst the devastation, as first responders from around the globe descend on the quake zone, braving aftershocks, freezing cold, and dangerous conditions. Here, you see rubble and debris collapsing on rescue workers as they scramble to find survivors. Oh. And here, a family of five, saved from the wreckage and mounds of debris, rescue workers passing them along a human chain to safety. And as the search goes on, arrests. This property developer taken into custody, authorities say, as he tried to leave the country. Turkish prosecutors ordering the detention of more than 100 people involved in the construction of buildings that collapsed. That's uh, funny because uh, the Turkish president allowed them to cut corners, so... Uh, will they also be arresting President Erdogan? Because he, he greenlit this entire thing. Are they going to yep. be arresting him? And in Syria, there have been massive challenges with access. In hard-hit Aleppo, rescuers using excavators searching through tons of rubble, still hoping to find anyone alive. Now, the anguish taking its toll. The earthquake was light, and then the building suddenly collapsed. Everyone died, and I don't remember anything. I don't even remember the days or the hours. Look, you have to lift the sanctions on Syria. You have to be able to get help in there. I mean, this is a, a massive humanitarian catastrophe. You can't take a political situation, a war, uh, you know, these international issues that are unrelated to this particular disaster and let that cloud your judgment. It's yeah. just, it's it's the right thing to do from a humanitarian perspective, a, a morality and ethics perspective. It's uh, it's illogical to be against helping them. It's, it's just, it's crazy. So lift the sanctions, help Syria. I hope Turkey gets more help. Clearly they need it. You got these terrible stories of, you know, people... One guy uh, talked about how he survived and they were able to dig him out after days. But he said, I stopped hearing people a few days back, man. There were other people who were buried near me and I heard them and then until a few days back, I stopped hearing them. So they had a, passed away and he ended up surviving. What a oh. terrible, terrible situation. Now, look, Fuck. on the building regulation thing, let's here's what the counter argument is. Let's be as kind as we can be. Let's steel man the opponent. The argument they make is, look, you don't want. If you get rid of all these onerous rules and regulations, all the red tape, as they call it, what happens? Well, you get rid of all the red tape, and then these builders don't want to make a bad building. They don't want to basically put out a bad product, because then people are going to know it's bad, and they'll get a bad reputation, and in the free marketplace, they'll just fail on their own merits. That's the argument they make. And um, the response to that is, some of these problems take 15 years, 20 years to manifest. And people might not know they, they're in an unsafe building or they have a product that's bound to malfunction until the catastrophe, the disaster arrives, and then it's too late, and then people are dead. I mean, think about this argument in the context of, like, pharmaceutical companies. Like, yeah, oh, you don't need rules and regulations and, and you know, people who are experts in safety to deal with the drugs. Because obviously the company wants to put out a good product or the reputation will be harmed. 
So they're going to put out the best product they can, whether or not there are rules. No. And it's like, no, a lot of these people are unscrupulous snake oil salesmen. This is insane, and dude. Some of the products will be total bullshit, and it's totally based off placebo effect and nothing else. Some this of these is products insane, end up being dude. From the market, after we learned, actually, that one kind of poisoned you. It's not a cure. It's part of the problem. So the argument just, it doesn't add up. A, a lot of the arguments from this super libertarian perspective on regulations, it's just, it's all theory. Beat There's no connection with the real world. Like, yeah, in theory, you can, con you can conceptualize of a Beat situation a Walmart. where a company would always do the right thing because they care about their reputation and so they do a good job for the sake of doing a good job and for the sake of putting out a good product. But it just turns out that in reality, not everybody is an honest actor. And a lot of people are going to cut a lot of corners to make more profit. They care more about the short-term benefit than the long-term viability of, of the company. Beat a kid at so Walmart just, at gunpoint. You need building regulations. You need codes. You and it makes me cry to, strict to even look at them. You know, if you live in on the Florida coast, you're going to want building codes that can withstand Category 5 hurricanes. Because guess what? Every now and then, you're going to get hit with a really strong hurricane. Yep. Should we not have that rule for places that are right on the coast in hurricane-prone areas? I certainly want to, wouldn't want to live in one of those structures, would you? It's just, it's so obvious. But again, there are people who will, who will contest it. You know, the economic libertarians, the, the anarcho-capitalists, who think regulations are always burdensome, they're always onerous, they're always unnecessary, it's always authoritarian on the part of the government. It's just a childish view. It really is. So anyway, there you have it. My heart goes out to Turkey. My heart goes out to Syria. What a horrendous situation. If you want to see... Yeah, dude, that's crazy.